So the Nebraska ladies basketball team uh, made it to the Big Ten Championship against Iowa. Caitlin Clark, Lisa Bluter of the Hawkeyes. Ridge Lovett uh, grinds his way to the Big Ten Championship himself. Uh, it's going to be a good day for Husker Nation. All right, there, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ethan Vice for Arsenal Lincoln. How are y'all feeling today? This morning, as a matter of fact, as we got a big day ahead of us. And here in about four hours, we will tip off uh, what is uh, hopefully a good game against Iowa for ladies. I will talk about that here in a minute. There's a lot to talk about on this show, as a matter of fact. Uh, so much that there's, you know, everybody, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> the show is unedited, ladies and gentlemen. It's raw. You'll hear me gag, burp, whatever. D don't, never mind that. All right, so, uh, you know, obviously everybody's excited for this Big Ten Championship game against Iowa. You know, obviously everybody's excited for Ridge Lovett to get, win a national, or, excuse me, gosh dang it, Big Ten Championship uh, and I'm here to talk about it. I I really feel like everything else is going to be irrelevant. So I'm going to start with everything that involves Big Ten titles. And then I'll talk about everything else with softball, tennis, all that. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started with this thing. Uh, starting with uh, wrestling. Uh, had a... We uh, finished day one of the Big Ten Championships. Uh, and this thing is not going as well as I thought. I really thought we could have had at least three in the finals of this thing. Here, Here's the thing. I'm not here to bitch. I don't bitch. I don't make excuses. None of that. But I really feel like Kale Sanderson and P the Penn State Lions always get their way some way or fashion. I have never seen so much headgear uh, pulling. I've never seen so much stalling in my life like these guys can get away with. And it, that bothers me. It really does. Uh, when Lenny Pinto was wrestling, you know, oh my gosh. The amount of times these guys freaking stall is unfathomable. And not to mention when they're tough. I I'm I'm done. I'm I'm done ranting about it. I just think they get favored. That's all I can say about that. Cause we, uh, all right, let's talk about the first round. I'm I'm, oh, I feel like Stephen A. Smith when I'm sitting here bitching about things. Okay, so first round, you know, action started uh, with Caleb Smith at 125 against Northwestern's Massey Adiati. Where Smith secured the 24-8 tech fall. Van D followed suit at 133 with a tech himself. Fall against Northwestern's uh, uh, number 13, Patrick Adams. Uh, Hardy recorded a pin against Northwestern's number 13, Colby McLean at 141. Excuse me. And that was Brock Hardy, if you couldn't understand me. Uh, and Rob Tech followed uh, Maryland's number 12, Michael North. Uh, at 165, Antrell Taylor defeated number 12, Max Mayfield, at Northwestern by decision. Uh, and All Red got the tech fall over number 13, Bobby Strigo of Michigan at 197. Uh, Wilson and Hookmacher battled, but Wilson fell at 174 by major decision, and Hookmacher lost by decision at heavyweight. He eventually actually is in the Constellation Semis at the moment, though. So uh, he's actually doing quite relevant right now. And a lot, that's who is surprising me in this tournament right now. It's Nash Hookmacher, uh, you know, on his way to go for third and fourth. The worst he can do is sixth place, which is still magnificent. So, um, man, what a great story to follow. Uh, we will talk about. You know where he's at here in a minute. Uh, also, Ridge Lovett, as I mentioned, is the only one who's going for first and second in this thing this year. Uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's just 
sad because we could have, you know, had three in the final set of this thing, you know, with Peyton Rob, with uh, Lenny Pinto, who got obviously screwed yesterday, big time. Nobody's even talking about it. And for the fact I'm wearing a Husker shirt, I shouldn't probably talk about it because, you know, everybody said, well, your boys against your team. Well, yeah, but if if you know wrestling, you know what I'm talking about. It, and it's just, uh, it, 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 it's very bothersome with how much Penn State can get away with. Uh, and also, uh, crazy stat that we learned yesterday. It, uh, since 1967, Iowa has had a finalist in uh, every Big Ten tournament. Uh, that was in danger until Joey Blaze, or excuse me, not Joey Blaze. He wrestles for Purdue. Um, I think it was, uh, was it Brody Teske? It, it was like one of their heavier guys that actually saved them from, uh, their streak. But yeah, since 1967, they've had a finalist in every Big Ten championship, which is, uh, very crazy to me. But anyway, I am getting out of hand here. Uh, let's see. Uh, consolation first round after a loss in the first round. Bubba Wilson uh, faced number 13, DJ Shannon of Michigan State in the consolation round where he secured his 7-3 victory and moved on in that. Uh, then we go to the quarterfinal round where Lovett advanced to the semis at 149 with a second period win over uh, Graham Brooks of Indiana. Taylor defeated number four Caleb Fish of Michigan State in sudden victory and got the 8-5 decision. At 184, Lenny Pinto defeated Roman uh, Rogotsky of Indiana 14-7 and All Red Top Minnesota's number five Garrett Joles at 197. Uh, Then number four Patrick McKee of Minnesota defeated Caleb Smith. 5-2 5-2 at 125. Van D then uh, scored a last-second takedown against Penn State's number 5, Aaron Nageo. But it wasn't enough as Van D fell by decision for 3. Hardy pat, uh, battled number 5, Sergio Limley of Michigan, but fell 4-2. to two, And Rob dropped his match to Iowa's number 4, Jared Brannick, 7-3. to three. Then we go to the Constellation second round where Smith started off strong for the Huskers with an 8-4 decision over Indiana's number 14, Blaine Frazier, at 125. Um, Van D then got the top 10 victory at 133 with this 10-8 decision over Ohio State's number 3. Nick uh, Buzikis Hardy defeated number 11, Cal Miller of Maryland 5-3 before Rob earned the 15 the nothing tech fall over Number 11, DeSantis of Rutgers. Uh, rounding out the group, advancing was Hookmacher, who faced Minnesota's number eight, Bennett Tabor, and defeated him by a major decision, nine to one. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Then number 12, Bubba Wilson, scored an escape and reversal. But number six, Jackson Turley of Rutgers, spin Wilson in period three. Um, let's see. Okay, so Constellation quarterfinals. Jacob Van D defeated number 10, Caden Brooks of Indiana, 11 to 6. Number 4, Brock Hardy got the major decision over Vance Bombar of Minnesota, uh, 10 to 2. Peyton Robb top number 9, Trevor Chumbley of Northwestern, 5 to nothing. And number 10, Nash Hutmacher defeated Maryland's uh, Seth Nevels, who was ranked number 5, uh, 7 to nothing. As the group advanced to sun, uh, today's uh, semifinals in the consolation round, uh, Smith wrestled Matt Ramos of Purdue, which uh, I was dreading that matchup. Uh, and yeah, it was a 5 2 loss for Caleb Smith. And so Caleb Smith now moves on to the 125 pound seventh place match. So uh, yeah, he. I really had high hopes for him, but, you know, Matt Ramos er, had to lose early, and then, you know, it 
it won twenty fives all screwed up in this tournament, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so semifinals, the big one of the day at one forty nine. <clears throat> Ridge Lovett faced Penn State's Tyler Kasak. Uh, Lovett used an escape in the third period takedown to secure the four to nothing victory in the spot in Sunday's finals. Um, at 165, Andrew Taylor wrestled Wisconsin's Dean Hamity and got his ass handed to him. Uh, got the pin in the first period. In fact, I was taking notes and the whistle just happened. And I was thinking, okay, hold on, I'll look up here in a minute. The minute I looked up, Andrew Taylor's already on his back. Uh, that, and that's actually credit to Dean Hamity. He's really good. It's nothing that's Andrew Taylor's fault, but... Dean Hamity is a beast. He's a badass, and he's going to win this championship. Uh, Antrell Taylor's going to, you know, get third. I really do believe that. I I really hated where he was lined up in this bracket, but uh, good luck to Dean Hamity. I, well, good luck to Dean Hamity's opponent in the championship match, which the commentators were really... Um, uh, drew one about yesterday, but Dean Hammity's got it under control, I do believe. And Antrel Taylor will take third. I just know it. Uh, speaking of third, that's what place our, we are as a team. So, um, you know, it's about where I thought we were, where we would be. Uh, but we're in the lead over Iowa right now, so... We got that going for us. Uh, I'm yawning. It's been a long day yesterday. Okay, so I digress, ladies and gentlemen. Let's uh, keep talking here. I got a lot to go over. All right. Uh, at 184, Lenny Pinto uh, met number three, Bernie Truax of Penn State in a rematch from a duel earlier this year. And this is where uh, Kale Sanderson winds and get his way. Uh and he, you know, I I do believe a lot of Penn State wrestlers are good people. Kale Sanderson says he's a good people, but man, do they whine during a match all the time? And but Kale Sanderson, here here's where you find folks at home that don't know wrestling. Kale Sanderson is one of only uh, four or five people to go undefeated his whole collegiate career. Well, he, he's a four-timer, four-time NCAA champion. Uh, there, there's about five four-timers. Uh, I want to say only like two of them are, went undefeated their whole entire career. Kale Sanderson is one of them. And uh, what Kale Sanderson says is what goes. I get, you know, uh, he's a very respected member of wrestling, and what he did as a wrestler collegiately is outstanding. It is damn near impossible to achieve, and he achieved it. It it takes a, for one, a strong mind. I think my mind over, you know body, you know, but it takes a strong, strong individual mentally to do something like that. That is, you know, un almost unreal to do what he did, you know, so I respect him for that. I really do. And what he's doing as a coach, doing the same thing now, you know, it, and it's, I mean, you guys want to talk about Nick Saban, uh, you know, or... Uh, Tennessee's women's basketball coach a long time, Pat uh, something. You know, you got those coaches. You've got Kale Sanderson won like 10 NCAAs in a row now as a coach. You know, this guy is the next John Smith, the re wrestling coach. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting off track. I, re I do respect the guy, but he does seem to know he can get his way when he argues anything. And in this match uh, with Lenny Pinto uh, taking on Bernie Truax, 
uh, I have never seen a guy grab so much headgear in my life. And if I was Lenny Pinto, I'd be grabbing his. I mean, it, and then not to mention with, you know, any time, like, like there was a point in this match where uh, Pinto was on his way for a takedown. Foot still in bounds. I mean, it was barely, but it was still in bounds. Oh, the refs were in a hurry to, you know, call this out of bounds. But then the minute that it went for true Axis favor, oh, they gave him all the room in the world. And th that's what I'm talking about. Like, they they don't, the refs don't want to disappoint Kale Sanderson. But, you know, and I'm not saying it's just, against us you know we're not the only victim of this nebraska isn't i see it on a lot of matches the refs don't want to disappoint kale sanderson and you know okay he doesn't whine all the time but you know the refs know who the guy is and they don't want to disappoint him and it, it's very shitty to see you know if, if one thing goes for one team it should go for the other you know Obviously, you know, I I don't know what I would do if I was in a red uniform myself, you know. I So, I don't know. Cut them some slack a little bit. But it, it just, you know, if you know what I'm talking about, if you see where I'm going about this, it, it's very annoying what you can see from that. And uh, we should have won this match. Lenny Pinto had that first take down. It was clear as day. His foot was in bounds, you know, and no mention from the commentator, nothing about it. And it, it just drove me banana sandwich. You know, we should have had two in the finals. Now Penn State gets a school record of seven in the finals, which, ladies and gentlemen, is absolutely amazing. This is probably the best wrestling team I'll ever see in my lifetime. You'll ever see in your lifetime. I don't know. Can can they get all 10 one of these days? I don't know. It's just annoying that you can only go for second because you got Kale Sanderson as a coach at Penn State. It just ah. Anyways, guys, I, I am talk, talking way too much about this stuff and going on a big rant, but I just feel like something needs to be said. But anyway, the two, two traded escapes before Truex got the takedown in period three to secure the 4 2 win at 197. Number four, Silas Allred fell to Penn State's number one, Aaron Brooks, by major decision, 14 2. Pinto and Allred will join the other Huskers in Constellation semifinals. And if I tell you somebody I do respect for Penn State, that's Aaron Brooks. The guy is a freaking machine. Uh, and he's going to go all the way this year and just win it all. I mean, Silas Allred's a good wrestler. Won Big Ten Championship last year. But for one, Aaron Brooks put on some mean-ass muscle. And uh, the guy is just... A, I would not want to meet him on street corner. That's for sure. The guy is a machine for sure. All right, so... We've got the semifinals coming up at 9 o'clock, an hour and a half from here. By the time I upload this video, that's going to go. I just wish I got to do this last night, but I did not get to it. Uh, I just did not have the info thrown at me. All right, so um, let's talk about uh, women's basketball now. The Maryland semifinal. Um Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. My stuff went unplugged. All right. <sighs> that was a great game. Great win against Maryland. Uh, it, it just feels sweet to be able to talk about a championship game for once. But, like, we're going to a championship and playing for a championship. I love it. Uh, and it's not just a regular season title or anything. This is for all the marbles for the Big Ten. Let's go. I don't even know where to start because I'm so excited. And I bet all of Husker Nation's excited for this. Uh, Jazz Shelley, a 5'9 graduate guard, hit 10 of 16 shots from the field, including 6 of 12 three-pointers. 
while going 4 4 4 at the free throw line to seal the win uh, down the stretch. Jazz Shelley just played an outstanding game. Uh, and we're going to need her again today, today, this morning, 11 o'clock. That's crazy. It's daylight savings, and we get an 11 o'clock game. We might as well start this thing at 10 a.m. Uh, <laughs> so we improved to 22 and 10 overall. We pretty much sealed our fate for the NCAA tournament, which is what everybody cares about. But um, we're 3 0 in the Big Ten tournament now. You know, after having just the first round by, we were all bitch. Uh, worried because we didn't get the double buy, but here we are. Uh, and I'll give uh, Maryland a lot of credit. They were seated eighth in this thing, you know, and made it all the way semis and gave us a pretty good scare there for, for a little bit. Uh, so we, you know, set up a third game this season against second seeded and national number three, Iowa, today, as I have just mentioned. Shelly was dynamic from start to finish, pouring in 17 points in the first half and an electric 11-0 run that included three threes in less than 90 seconds to end the first quarter. The Huskers, who never trailed in the game, held a 13-point lead late in the second quarter, but Maryland rallied to tie the game at 51 with more than four minutes left in the third period. Shelly answered with a big bucket to regain the lead for the Huskers. At 53-51 to 51, with 327 left in the period. And the, uh, Kendall Coley then con uh, connected on one of the game's biggest shots with her three-pointer in the left corner 30 seconds later to put us up five. Uh, then you got Onik uh, Stewart then scored inside to cap a crucial 7-0 Husker run to give the Big Red a 58-51 lead. Stewart finished with nine points off the bench while... Coley added six points on a pair of threes. And uh, it's pretty cool. You get uh, two Minnesotas, Minnesotans on our team. That means we can have some friends and family come and watch us at this uh, title game, you know. So that's an advantage I think we have is uh, we got a couple of Minnesota natives on our team, you know. And this thing sold out, and we get a big national audience. And, you know, everybody's going to watch it, too. So this is really awesome. Great exposure for the Huskers. Of course, everybody's going to be on the side of Caitlin Clark. You know, she's everybody's favorite animal right now. And, uh, yes, it's annoying, but, you know, I'll give her her due. You know, she broke the NCAA record. I, it's not all-time record. But the NCAA record, uh, if you want to get technical, there was this thing called AIAW before the NCAA took over women's sports. And there is an individual, I can't remember her name, but Pearl something, she still has the all-time women's record. So uh, Caitlin Clark broke an NCAA record. I know I'm I'm being shitty about it, <laughs> but the, the, I'm just it, you know if if we're wanting to say all time, make it all time. Don't say you know she broke an NCAA record and then she breaks an all time record. Now it is impressive she did beat Pistol Pete's record that got held that record for a very 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 long time, and so that is a. Great achievement. So, anyway, I am talking way too damn much. I got a lot to go over. Uh, Maryland answered back. Uh, Nebraska spurt with eight points late in the third quarter to narrow the margin 60-59 heading into the fourth quarter. Uh, Colin Hake, who finished with seven points, five rebounds, two assists, and two key ch uh, charges drawn then sink a pair of free throws to open the final quarter. Shelly, Shelly took center stage again by sinking her sixth three-pointer with 7.50 left after a basket by uh, Maryland's Hallie Kubik, freshman Logan Nisley, and Fre uh, Natalie Potts scored five straight points before Shelly hit another shot to push Nebraska's lead back to 
double digits at 72-61 with 431 left. Nisley and Potts combined for 10 points on the day while fellow freshman Jessica Petrie pitched in five more. Maryland fought back one more time to cut the margin to six, but Shelley scored Nebraska six uh, next six points to finish with 11 in the fourth on her way to her sixth career 30-point performance, including her second in seven career Big Ten tournament contests. Uh, Shelley, whose previous season high of 23 points, came in a win over number two Iowa, added nine assists for uh, four rebounds and two steals on the day. Alexis Morkowski added a strong performance inside despite being strapped with two uh, with foul trouble, scoring nine points to go along with a game high of 13 rebounds. As a team, Nebraska finished by shooting uh, 45%. Uh, from the field, including 13 of 28 three-pointers. The Huskers also hit 9 of 14 free throws while winning the battle of the boards 36-32. The Big Red also won the tournament fight 16 to 15. Okay, so Maryland hit 45 and a half percent. And I just lost that, so going on, they did shoot 45 and a half percent from the field. Uh, we jumped out to a quick start, uh, building an early six-point lead. Maryland uh, trimmed the margin to thirteen to margin to fourteen to twelve before Shelley caught fire. Her eleven zero run in the final ninety seconds or of the first quarter included a mesmerizing double crossover that sent defensive star Cheyenne Sellers to the floor before Shelley drained a three. Shelley hit two more threes to end the quarter, including a 30-footer ahead of the buzzer to give the Big Red a 25-12 lead after one period. Uh, Maryland answered uh, early in the quarter to cut Nebraska's lead to 32-27 before Shelley and fellow Australian Jessica Petrie teamed up for three straight three straight three-pointers in less than a minute to push Nebraska's margin back to uh, 41-29 with 4.54 left. A Kendall Coley three-pointer with 2.14 left in the half to extend the Nebraska's margin back to 13 points at 47-34, but the Terps closed the half with a 6-0 run in the final two minutes. That got me worried for the next half, uh, and I was proved right as they continued doing what they're doing. But there was a point in the game where we just made a three-pointer, and I think it was from Jess Shelley, and then we started a run from there. And that was right when they were on the cusp of taking over the game. Uh, So at the right time, we hit a three and got ourselves back on track. And, uh, boy, that was a huge play. I can't remember at what point during the game that happened, but it was uh, beautiful to see. Uh, Shelly, who led Nebraska with 17 points and four assists in the half, hit five in Nebraska's 10 first half three-pointers. As we have connected on 10 of 18 long range attempts in the half. Overall, Nebraska knocked down 17 of 32 shots and 3 of 6 free throws. Nebraska also outbounded the Turbs 16 12 in the half. Markowski pulled down 10 first half rebounds while adding 7 points. Maryland hung tough uh, by hitting 59.3% of its first half shots, including 1 of 2 threes. The Huskers also sank a Seven out of ten free throws. The Terps won the first half turnover fight nine to seven. Uh, Sellers led Maryland with 13 points and six assists and a half, while uh, Mazanias added 10 points. So uh, that covers everything for the Big Ten uh, championships going on today. Uh, beautiful stuff. Uh, we had NCAA championships uh, yesterday, so I'll get to those next. But uh, what a day we had yesterday and what a day we're going to have today with Rich Lovett and the Nebraska ladies basketball team competing for Big Ten titles. I am very excited for that. So for the sake of the show, I do got a lot to cover. I won't get as in depth. You know, I'll just basically say we won and lost stuff. Uh, just so this uh, video can upload and we can have something to enjoy before uh, the big day. Uh, so uh, let's get right to it. Um, and let's start with track and field. 
did not win a national championship, unfortunately. Um, let's see, where where are we at? Okay. I am actually looking for my notes. Okay, so. Um, day three of the, well, final day of track and field. Men tied for 12th. Women placed 25th. So, overall, good showing. No individual champion this year for indoor. I do fully expect we'll get some national champions in the outdoor season, though. There is a good margin of difference between indoor and outdoor. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but there is a bit of a difference. But uh, we will have a better outdoor season, I do believe. And Justin St. Clair, what a job he is doing as coach. I cannot say that enough. Uh, Trev Albert's best hire. It, and Trev Albert's made great hires, but Justin St. Clair uh, is a monster of a coach. And we're just getting started, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to wind up with a lot of conference national champions under this guy's uh, reign. I mean, we had, you know, a good longtime head coach out of. Um, Oh, damn, I forgot his name. Uh, but you all know who I'm talking about. He's a freaking legend. Uh, but Justin St. Clair uh, is going to be one himself. I mean, he's already putting up, doing some great coaching things here at Nebraska. So let's uh, talk about this. Even though we didn't get a national champ this year, we will wind up with many, I do believe. All right, so, uh, you know, this thing was held in Boston, Massachusetts for the first time. A day after becoming the first Husker to become a long jump first team All American in the last decade, uh, Till Steinford recorded his highest career NCAA finish in the heptathlon with a total of 6,140 points. Steinford placed third on Saturday. He clocked an 8.03 in the 60 meter hurdles, cleared 16, 7 and a quarter in the pole vault and ran uh, 250-42 in the 1,000 meter. The last Husker placed third or higher in the heptathlon at the NCAA Indoor Championships was Bajorn Verforce in 2009. Last season, Steinford placed fourth in the NCAA Championships in both the heptathlon and decathlon. Uh, the Big Red added a pair of first-team All-Americans in the high jump. Tyus Wilson equaled his personal best of 7-3 to claim fourth at his first NCAA uh, indoor championship meet. The junior made his NCAA debut during last season's outdoor meet, taking fourth. Jenna Rogers became a four-time high jump first-team All-American on Saturday, clearing uh, 6-2. To tie for six, that was her third consecutive NCAA Indoor Championships, placing in the top eight with a fourth place finish in 2023 and a seventh place finish in 2022. Uh, then you have Rihanna Phipps, who provided a big final attempt in the triple jump, hitting a personal best of 44 7 to move up two spots in point fifth. That mark was also uh, the third best jump in school history. Phipps had previously earned two second-team All-American honors, but it is her first time being named a first-team All-American. And as you all know, we are a uh, school known for our field events. We're not so much for track events. Even though we had great runners in the past, field is where it's at for the University of Nebraska because we do believe in throwing heavy shit around, you know. That is just what we do. Okay, so in the men's triple jump, Michaela Moore and Terrell Wilson made their NCAA championship debuts with the distance of 52-10 and a quarter. Moore secured first-team All-American status with a seventh-place finish. He claimed his first uh, Big Ten title in the triple jump two weeks ago. Wilson was named the second-team All-American, placing 13th with a 57 and a half. Uh, at this season's uh, Big Ten Championships, Wilson was the triple jump bronze medalist with both athletes reaching the championship meet. Saturday became the first team, first time two Husker men were named All-Americans in the triple jump. Uh, so, 
yeah, good stuff there. In the women's uh, shot put, uh, Mine to Clerk placed seventh with a 56, one and three quarter to earn her first team all of uh, first first team All America honor. De Clerk is in her first season competing for Nebraska after transferring from Oregon and is the reigning Big Ten champion in the shot put. Kevin Schubert collected his second career second team All-American honor, placing 14th in the men's shot put with a throw of 69 and a half. Schubert's last time at the NCAA championships was during the 2021 indoor season where he plays 16th in the shot put. Um, then the Husker men tied for 12th with 17 points, while the women placed 25th with 8.5 points. Texas Tech won the men's race with 50.5 points, and Arkansas claimed the women's title with 55. And as you all know, Arkansas is the epitome of track and field. They are... Uh, they got a lot of natties, that's for sure. Okay, with the indoor season coming to a close, Nebraska looks to the outdoor season beginning March 29th through the 30th with the Florida Invitational and the Stanford Invitational. So we still got outdoor season to go. And that's kind of why I like track and field. You know, you get two seasons. It's incredible. All right, so moving on, Beach Volleyball, Queens Cup. I will not get to wrapped up on this as we're basically just an exhibition team. You know, I say that with a lot of grace, you know, because there is a lot of difference between beach volleyball and court volleyball. This is training ground for our court volleyball. So, you know, we play year-round volleyball at Nebraska. It's really cool to see. Okay, so wrapped up the Queens Cup in Honolulu where it looked like the Girls had a lot of fun. Ladies, I should say. Uh, girls are high school age. These are ladies. Okay, so uh, Huskers finished fifth place in the tournament after losing the Pepperdine in the quarterfinals. Four to one before rebounding with a 5-0 sweep over Chaminade. Uh, never heard of Chaminade. Uh, is that a drink? All right, so uh, Nebraska shuffled its lineup. On Saturday with Merritt Beeson teaming up with Harper Murray and Skylar Pierce joining Laney Choboy. Beeson and Murray won their number three match against Pepperdine 21-17, 12-21, to 15-6 uh, to score a team point for the Big Red. Against Chaminade, Beeson and Murray made a quick work of their number two match winning 21-8, 21-11. Lexi Rodriguez and Lindsey Krause Played at number three and one, 21 to eight, 21 to six, and Andy Jackson and Olivia Malk clinched a winning team point with a 21 17, 21 16, and then number five spot. All right, Allie Batenhorst and Bergen Riley added a 15 21, 21 16, 15 11 comeback win in the number one spot, and Choboy and Pierce also had a comeback win, 15 to 21, 21 14, 19 to 17. At 10 to 7 on the season, the Huskers will travel to Hilo on Sunday for matches against Hawaii Hilo on Monday and Tuesday. So it looks like the ladies do get to stay in Hawaii and enjoy themselves. This is spring break for them. Why not? Uh, good times for them. Uh, I bet when they got recruited, they said, hey, you're going to go on a spring break vacation to Hawaii and you're going to enjoy it. And you're, you're also going to compete, but you're going to enjoy a nice spring break, and that's what they are doing. So a lot of fun for them. They get to train and uh, go on a vacation. So that's uh, pretty cool. Um, speaking of cool, ladies and gentlemen, the men's tennis team got another win yesterday. A nice, huge, victorious win over UCSD uh, yesterday evening. Number 56 men's uh, tennis team improves to 9-4 and four for the season. The ninth victory ties the team's best program start since the 2018 season. We have uh, two more matches in California in the upcoming week before beginning Big Ten play on March 26th. Or 22nd, excuse me, sorry. All right, so uh, with that win, let's talk about it. At the Northview Tennis 
courts home of UCSD. The Huskers took on the Tritons for their 13th match of the season in doubles court uh, threes. Uh, Shinya Mariyama and Nikolai Saisov took on Eric Silberman and Jer uh, Jack Cole and defeated the duo 6-1. to one. Next to finish was the number one duo, Anton Shep and Nick Weidenhorn, who matched up against Zach Pelochild and Peleo Rodriguez. Uh, I really have to read these names carefully because it's very difficult. Okay. Nebraska took the 6-4 victory in the doubles point with a win. Calvin Mueller and Lars Johan match on court two was left unfinished at 5-4. to four. Uh, And singles play recently ranked uh, number 120. And Shep made uh, quick work of... Uh, we have Philip Land on court one, taking the first singles win, 6-1-6-0. Saiso had played in the number six slot and defeated Cole, 6-1-6-2. Next to finish was Mariama on court three, winning 6-1-6-2 over Rodriguez to clinch the match victory for the Big Red. Mueller had a tight first set, but dominated the second to win 7-6, 6-1. Christensen played on court five and defeated Charles Kwan. Uh, 6 3 6 2. Johan played the number four slot and found a close match against Pella Child. Johan dropped the first set, rallied to take the second, and fell just short in the tiebreaker, dropping the match 3 6 6 3 0 1. Um, with a win over the Tritons, the Big Red improved to 9 4 on the season. The best 13 match program start since 2018. Five Huskers won their singles match in straight sets. Uh, won the margin of four or more games. Number three doubles duo Mariama Saiswa partnered uh, for the eighth time and improved to 2-0 and oh in the spring season with their dominant 6-1 win. Um, let's see what else. Are, nationally ranked uh, Shep tallied another win in singles, pushing the spring record with the Huskers 11-2. Mariama improved. To eight and three in spring singles and Christensen two five and three. Uh, so next up, the number fifty six Nebraska Cornhuskers will face number fifty five Yale. So uh, obviously this looks like it could be a good one. Uh, this is going to be a neutral match at UC Santa Barbara, Barbara on uh, Wednesday, March thirteenth at noon. On Friday, the Huskers will take on number 53, UC Santa Barbara, before starting conference play. Um, so with that, uh, let's talk about that sports real quick. No, let's talk about Rifle real quick because they did complete the uh, NCAA championships and that. So uh, moving on, Rifle, day two, NCAA championships, play state with a uh, team score of 4,680. Yes, eighth place is technically last in the championships, but, you know, we're still ranked number eight in the country. So, uh, top 10 team finished for, you know, you can't go wrong with that. So, uh, great job by the ladies. Uh, team captain Cecilia Ossi, who was last year's small bore national champion, did not achieve it this year. Uh, she uh, led the team with a sixth place finish overall in the 1,184 aggregate score. Uh, the Huskers competed in the air rifle event on Sunday with Emma Road notching 595 to lead Nebraska and earn a 12th place finish. Aussie shot a 593. Charlie Mick posted a 588 and McKenzie Strzok with a 587. Camila Johansson rounded out the lineup. The Big Red shot 2,363 as a team. So, TCU is your uh, 2024 national champion with a 4,732. West Virginia uh, is your runner-up with a 4,729. Alaska Fairbanks. Uh, is your bronze fi finalist uh, with the 4,719 finished second and third respectively. Kentucky gets fourth, their fourth with fifth, Navy in sixth, Ole Miss in seventh, and of course we are number eight. So 
hey, you know, not a bad year. You know, we were struggling during the season, but then found our way to finish number eight in the country. So, uh, great stuff by the rifle team. Uh, way to finish the season. Uh, kudos. Uh, all right. So, uh, like I said, I don't really want to get too technical with the uh, bat sports because uh, there's uh, just a lot of info to talk about it. Uh, but so we'll start with softball. Beating uh, St. Francis and then beat North Alabama. We're one and one of the day yesterday. Uh, where we went three and one overall at the Razorback uh, Invitational or whatever. Uh, the so I I don't want to talk about the loss too much as much I want to talk about the win. But South that St. Francis, uh, you know that was a close game six three, uh, eight inning loss. Um, let's see, I'll just talk about the notes here. Nebraska played its uh, second extra inning game of the season and fell 0-2 in extra innings. Uh, Ava Bradwell was 2-3 for three with a double and triple. Her third game this season uh, with multiple extra base hits. Ava Brett, uh, Billy Andrews doubled in the third inning to extend her hitting streak to 16 games. Andrews also had the extra base hit in 10 of her last 11 games. Um, Bella Bacon drove in two of Nebraska's three runs against St. Francis. Uh, Bacon has five RBIs in the, uh, in the Huskers' first three games at the Razorback Rumble. Sarah Harness threw a total of six innings in St. Francis, her longest outing of the season, and matching the longest outing by a Husker this season. So, uh, that does that for St. Francis. Then we get a win against, uh, North Al or, excuse me, South Alabama. So, Softball gets South Alabama. Baseball gets South Alabama. So we'll talk about the win against uh, softball South Alabama first before I move on to baseball. So Sydney Gray homered twice and Kaylin Kinney tossed Nebraska's first complete game of the season. As we have won the final game of the Razorback Rumble with a 5-1 victory over South Alabama. Gray, who went three for four with a double and two home runs, drove in three runs for Nebraska. Gray was the star at the plate, while Kenny delivered the Huskers' best pitching performance of the season. <clears throat> Kenny scattered six hits and allowed only one run in a complete game effort. She held South Alabama to a season low one run while earning her third victory of the weekend. Uh, Madison Lagle. Uh, took the loss for South Alabama, allowing two runs in two innings. The Jaguars, who own three victories over ranked opponents this season, threw three different pitchers at Nebraska's hitters, and the Huskers scored against all three. Uh, Nebraska scored all the runs. Uh, Kenny would need with a two-run first inning. Brooke Andrews got the thing started with a one-out double. She scored on all uh, on a two-out RBI single from Bella Bacon and Gray, uh, followed with an RBI double that brought Bacon home and gave Nebraska a 2-0 lead. Uh, Gray then led off the fourth inning uh, with a home run stretch uh, to stretch the Husker lead 3-0. Uh, South Alabama manufactured a run to trim the lead 3-1 in the bottom of the fifth. The lead off, a walk eventually turned into a run on a sack fly. The Jaguars went on to have runners at second and third before Kinney had a clutch uh, strikeout to end the inning. Uh, Nebraska immediately got the run back in the top of the sixth when Gray led off with her second home run of the game, leading 4-1. to one. Caitlin Neal followed with a double, and Caitlin Kaneda singled and stole second to put Nebraska on second and third with no outs. Alina Felixson scored. Neal with an RBI fielder's choice to make it 5-1 after a strikeout. Billy Andrews was hit by a pitch to load the bases with one out, but the next two Huskers were retired. Uh, Kenny then, then retired South Alabama in order in the sixth and seventh to wrap her seventh win of the season. 
Uh, we return home for a pair of games on Tuesday at Bowen Stadium. These are replacements after the rain out against Arkansas on Friday. Uh, so we get, we'll get take on Northern Colorado at noon and Maine at 5, on, both on Tuesday. And the games are free to watch. So, hey, you get a double bonus there. Noon, probably nobody's going to be there. Everybody has to work. Uh well, except for the kids. Kids can come, uh, but because uh, they're on spring break. Uh, and then you got Maine at 5 where everybody can go watch. So uh, that's cool. Uh, Nebraska finished a Razorback Rumble with a 3-1 and one record. As I have mentioned, uh, let's see, we stole 11 bases in four games at the Razorback Rumble entering the weekend. Uh, we have stolen seven bases in its first 18 games on, on the season. A uh, total of seven Huskers hit 333 or better at the Razorback Rumble. Uh, Kaylin Kinney tossed Nebraska's first complete game of the season. It was her fifth career complete game uh, and first career seven inning complete game. Kinney pitched in three of Nebraska's four games at the Razorback Rumble, going 3 0 with a .98 ERA and 14 innings. Sydney Gray. Uh, went three for three and with a double and two home runs. She set a career high with three extra base hits and tied her career high with two home runs. The fourth two run, uh, homer game of her career. Bella Bacon had an RBI in the first inning. She drove in a run in all four games of the Razorback Rumble, finishing the tournament with six RBIs. Billy Andrews singled in the fifth inning to extend her hitting streak to 17 games. So moving on. To baseball real quick. Uh, man, I am going almost over an hour here. Okay, Brett Sears, third straight quality start and four long balls field Nebraska to a 13-2 victory over South Alabama at Hawksfield. And this was after getting uh, waxed on a disappointing first day against South Alabama. So, rubber match today. Hopefully we come out victorious and win another series. That would be nice. Uh, and, of course, you know, some games are just going to be bad. I mean, that first game against South Alabama was just a bad outing for us. Um, seems like you're always just going to have that one bad game in every series you play. So, uh, hopefully day one was that and we scratched that itch. Uh, we scored 13 runs on 16 hits and left five men on base while South Alabama had two runs on five hits and left three men on base. Uh, Garrett England went three for four with a pair of doubles at the plate for Nebraska ball. Tyler Stone, Josh Karen each added two run home runs. Clay Bradford slugged a pinch hit three run homer while Rhett Stokes, excuse me, produced three hits and drove in three Husker runs. Case Sanderson finished two for three with a double and Riley Silva reached base on an RBI single. Uh, let's see. Sears allowed two runs, uh, earned run, uh, okay, he allowed two earned runs on four hits and six strikeouts across eight innings of work. The Iowa native is now 2-0 with a 1.7 ADRA across his first four starts this season. He has struck out seven batters in all four of his outings this season and has produced three straight quality starts. Kyle Frelich entered the game in the ninth and tossed a scoreless frame. Sears picked up a uh, where he left off last week. Uh, damn it, I lost my spot. Okay, but he basically picked up where he left off last week. Uh, through a good game. Okay, a one-out double from Karen gave Nebraska its first hit of the game before Sanderson's RBI singled up the middle, put Nebraska in front, one to nothing. England continued the uh, multi-run inning with a knock, followed by Stokes RBI single to double the Huskers lead after the second frame. Uh, on the mound, Sears worked through the bottom half of the order without any trouble, producing five strikeouts across the first three innings. Nebraska added uh, to its lead after Stone's walk, followed by a wild pitch, put him in scoring position. Karen then launched his fourth home run of the season to right field to bring home Stone and push the Huskers' lead 4 to nothing. 
Nebraska's offense continued to add to the lead as Anderson reached on a hit by pitch before England's double, his second hit of the day, put runners on second and third. Stokes brought home Sanderson with an RBI ground out, followed by Silva's run scoring singles as the Huskers began to pull away. The Jags got on the board in the fifth inning as a leadoff double came around to score on J.G. Bell's RBI single to make it 6-1. to one. However, Evans reached base to begin the sixth inning, and Sanderson single put runners on the corners for the Big Red. Stokes dro- drove in his third run of the afternoon with an RBI bunt for a base hit to extend Nebraska's lead 7-1. Huff walked to the open, uh, to open the seventh inning before Stone launched a two-run home run to right field. Evans followed that up with a solo homer of his own, his first of the season to pad the Huskers' lead. Uh, we continue to pour it uh, on in the eighth inning as England's double and Stokes' single set the table for Bradford's pinch hit. Uh, Three-run shot to make it 13-2 with Nebraska ahead. It marked Nebraska's first pitch hit, pinch hit homer since Ty Rosberry did so against Purdue in 2019. Uh, Froelich entered the ninth inning and retired three of four batter, batters in face to secure the win. Uh, Nebraska and South Alabama wrap up the weekend series tomorrow or today at 12.05 Central. We got a lot of things going on at noon, and nobody's going to watch that game because we're going to be so busy watching Big Ten championships for wrestling. Got women playing Iowa. You got men's basketball going on that new. It's going to be a mess at the same damn time. All right. And that's kind of what sucks about today. You have to have like 500 different devices to watch everything. All right. Women's gymnastics. Uh, they went up against EMU, Florida, Lindenwood yesterday. Uh, notched at season high of 197-150 to play second in this event. So good job for the ladies. Uh, Emma Spence claimed the floor title with a career high of 9.950 and placed second in the all around with a season high of 39.550. Uh, the Huskers vault score 49.225 and floor score 49.450. Both tied the team's season highs uh, along with Spence's career high on floor. Sengebach say notched a career best at 9.850 on beam. Isabel Sycon tied her career high at 9.850 on vault. And Whitney Jenks notched a career best at 9.850 on floor. Uh, Florida took first place with a 197.700. Nebraska was second with its 197.150. Lindenwood was third with a 196.325. And Eastern Michigan was fourth with a 193.600. Um, this time around, ladies and gentlemen, I will not talk about the rotations only because time just doesn't permit me to. Uh, so I, I still got one preview to go through that I have been thrown at, and that is, uh, swimming and diving for next week. Uh, and w- which by the way, a lot going on next week. Uh, and I will talk about that, uh, on either tonight or tomorrow's episode, depending if I can get a show in tonight. Anyway, um, I will go ahead and talk about the swimming and diving. Uh, Four Husker divers will compete in the NCAA Zone D Diving Championships, which is in Houston, uh, and that is tomorrow on Monday. Abby Baxter, Kelsey Claremont, Antonina Harned, and Frankie Webb will represent the Huskers in competition after posting zone qualifying scores throughout the season. Um, Zone D championships serve as a qualifier for the NCAA championships, which is held on in March 20th through the 23rd in Athens, Georgia. Uh, As you all know, we have Gina Jorgensen entering this event for her, uh, I think two events, one or two events, something like that. Uh, So now this is our chance for our divers to get in on the thing. Of course, you know, we're far from a team title. But hopefully, maybe we can get some uh, All-Americans through this deal. Uh, That would be cool. Uh, Baxter has been a force for the Huskers in her freshman campaign. 
She posted numerous zone qualifying scores in both the one and three meter, capturing seven first place finishes along the way. Baxter posted her career best on the one meter against Iowa and three meter against Illinois. Uh, in last year's Zone D Championships, Kelsey Claremont qualified for the NCAA Championships on the platform dive with a career best score of 496-400. Claremont logged eight top three finishes this season while earning career best in the uh, one and three meter dive. She's set to compete on the three meter and platform this week. Antonina Harned posted 13 zone qualifying scores between the one and three meter this season and added 10 top three finishes for the Huskers. The freshman from Windermore, Florida set a career best on the one meter against Iowa on the three meter against K-State and the platform at the Camo International Invite uh, with a 196.70. Uh, Frankie Webb grabbed the uh, runner-up finish on the three meter against Illinois to set a career best in earning zone qualifying score. Uh, on Monday, Harned and Baxter will compete on the one meter beginning at 11.45 a.m. They will join Webb and Claremont in the three meter on Tuesday. On Wednesday, Claremont will compete on the platform. Uh, in Zone D, the top 11 divers in the 1 meter and the top 9 divers in the 3 meter and platform will punch their tickets to the championships. Uh, so, with that said and done, uh, the, figured I should mention about those. So, we got some events today. You know, of course, we got the wrestling, we got the basketballs, we got the bat sports. Men's golf starts the Johnny O today. Uh... Let's see. Women's tennis takes on Iowa today. Beat the Hawks. Uh, and then men's jet gymnastics will take on Illinois. So I will recap all these events on my next show. Uh, along with talking about what's going on all week next week. Busy ass week to say the least. Got numerous things. On Wednesday I will be at the Nebraska Wichita State game. Uh, figure you know, Huskers will be in town, so why not catch a game? I can't on Tuesday, get stuff going on, but Wednesday I'll be there. Busy week next week. However, I don't know how many shows I can get in. I'm hoping I can cover the week as best as I can. I'll let you guys know how all that goes. So uh, with that, guys, uh, join me for my next show to recap today's events. Uh, so let's go get, beat Iowa today. Let's hope, hope that Ridge Lovett gets the uh, Big Ten title today. Uh, so, yeah, a lot going on. So with that, guys, always remember to be excellent to each other. Go Big Red. Maybe. <laughs>